lot of us are homebound, locked in, locked down, depends on where you are. And, you know, the governments around the globe are just about asking everybody to stay in their house. Well, it's a great time to spend time learning and improving your trading abilities. And for that purpose, we lots of brokers, including Alvexo, have demo platforms. And you can spend time on the demo platform while you're sitting home with nothing to do or the kids driving you crazy. And trade under a demo and master a new strategy. So today we're going to be learning the indecision candle setup. <clears throat> now, most new traders learn a little bit about candlestick analysis most of what they learn is completely useless. And believe me, I teach a lot of classes in candlesticks, candlestick pattern recognition, candlestick analysis, you know, understanding engulfing candles, you name it, I teach it. But most of those classes for the type of trader we are in today's modern online world don't really work well for us. Okay. So most of what we learn, if we learn candlestick analysis or pattern recognition is totally useless because the standard approach to candlestick analysis is basic pattern recognition which fails to work in real trading you know candlesticks have been around since the 1700s and they were used by rice traders and candlesticks work we're not talking about candlestick charts we're talking about reading candlestick and uh, patterns works great. It still holds out very well in slower paced markets. In our fast paced market, looking for these patterns can be daunting and too slow to help us really make trading decisions. Now, you should know what they are though. So we're not going to skip right through them and forget that they actually exist. Okay. So what I did is say you have the basics. If you look on your screen, there's a little area that says handouts where you can um, download what I put in there for you. And I put in there a candlestick cheat sheet. These are the top 32 patterns that everybody should know and understand. You don't have to memorize them. I can't remember what most of them are called. I know when, when I see them, I know what they look like. But that's them. So you can download that cheat sheet. There's no registration, there's no fee, there's nothing you have to do. Just click the download button and it's a JPEG and you'll have it. It's a really nice one too. Also, while we're on the subject, I also put in there the technical analysis guide from investing.com. This is an excellent resource material. It covers all the fields of technical analysis and it goes over charts. So it's gonna to explain to you Japanese candlestick charts also, but it's a large book. And it's got lots of material that will help you. So you might as well use it well, if you're stuck homebound and read it cover to cover if you want. And again, there's no registration, there's no fee, there's no nothing. Just click the download button. It'll be in a PDF format that you can use at your convenience. But they're only available in the live class. <clears throat> now, when Forex traders first start out, they usually learn about candlesticks. But what they learn is usually useless. They normally see a list of candlestick patterns, hence the candlestick cheat sheet. And each pattern has set in stone definition, and that is what the only meaning that it can have. So we have things like hammers, inverted hammers, dojis, bullish spinning tops, shooting stars, hanging man, gravestones. We have bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing, hammurabis. We have marabuzus, tons of them. But this is not candlestick analysis. This is pattern recognition. And for a price action trader, price uh, pattern recognition is really useless. Actually, it's worse than useless. The thinking about candles as just a pattern is counterproductive. It makes you a worse trader. It leads you to make massive mistakes. Why, you ask? Giving a pattern a set definition leads to tunnel vision. When you see that specific pattern, you assume that something will happen. But that is not how candlesticks work. All candlesticks need to be assessed based on candlesticks around them and many other factors. 
So the truth about candlestick analysis is normally people say things like a spinning top, and a spinning top's on that cheat sheet I gave you, means a reversal is imminent, which could be true. However, that same pattern could also mean that a continuation is imminent. It can mean that price is temporarily stalling. It can mean a lot of different things. Thinking of candles as a simple pattern is a wrong way to do things. You need to look beyond the pattern and read the story of price. Okay, and this helps us interpret candlesticks. Every single candle on your chart is telling you a story. When you combine those candles together, you get the story of price. And this is the foundation to my strategy. Reading and understanding the story of price is vital. It is vital because it allows you to answer one of the most important questions in trading. What is that? Who is in control of the market now? Not yesterday, not in the news post, not in the analysis you read. Who is controlling the market right now? Now that question has three possible answers, buyers, sellers, or neither. Being able to accurately answer this question is vital. If you are about to enter a short trade, you need to ask yourself, who's in control? If your answer is the buyers, well, perhaps selling or going short is not a great idea at the moment. So let's break down the story of price. So if you look at the three highlighted candles on the chart, it's easy to conclude that the sellers are in control, right? That's that yellow highlight area. We see three bold red candles. Now we could have three red, two blue, two, two green, one orange, but they were all, the overall massive market movement was down. And we see each close is lower. So who is in control? We would say the bears. But then what does that next little tiny candle tell us? Okay, so we have this massive, now when we can say a downtrend, we're not talking about a trend line, we have, and a trend can be just the last, if you're looking at a one hour chart, could have been the last three hours, price was trending down over the last three hours. Okay, but then what do we get? We get this little green candle next to it. It really doesn't mean it has to be green. What we get is we get a short bodied candle. Now a short body means that the open and the close were virtually the same or close to being the same. We have a long wick that shows you the bulls, the bears were trying to push down price. They were trying to stay in control. But somehow or another, they lost control and price moved up back up to near the open. Okay, now it could have closed lower than the open and given you another little red candle. What we're looking at is the body of the candle. Okay, the body of the candle is very small. When we see that, it shows us the market has shifted to indecision. So the candles. In the, in the previous candles, all close lower than they open. They created new lows beyond the previous candle low and they all had upper wicks in comparison to the candle body. The smaller upper wicks indicate the buyers were unable to push price up much. So that tells us that the bears were in control. But what does this highlighted candle tell us? It has a short upper wick, a small body and a long lower wick. This is what we call an indecision candle. Okay. Now, this isn't a Hammurabi, it's not a Marabuzu, it's not an engulfing candle. It doesn't matter anything else. Small little body. It could be a doji that's got a little straight line. It could have a little, you have a little bit bigger body. It's a small bodied candle. That's it. So what's an indecision candle tell us? Now we just have to be able to recognize candles. They happen, they happen all the time. Indecision candles occur when neither buyers or sellers can gain and maintain control of price. So what we had were we had the bears dominating the market. All of a sudden we had indecision coming. 
So they are common, but if used the right way, they can be very powerful. So let's take a look at the bullish trend on this chart. So again, we have the reverse than we saw before. Strong move up and the indecision candle. But like I said, this happens all the time. Okay. Doesn't help our trading, doesn't help our decision making, doesn't, is not part of a strategy. It just happens. This is the way the market happens to be. Okay. So the truth about candlestick analysis, when price hits resistance, we get an indecision candle forming. So let's break down this into the story so you can understand what indicates this indecision. Now, for the, our indecision strategy, okay, we have to now combine these candles with all of us should have our support and resistance levels drawn on our charts at all times. Okay. Like I said, price moves up, price moves down, indecision candles happen all the time. We are only concerned when the indecision candle forms on our support or resistance zone. Now, I'm not saying port support and resistance price because too many people see that there's a resistance level at 149.9 and they draw a line across it. And so do I, you'll, you'll see on my charts and we're gonna go look at some live charts in a minute, that that's where I have my price drawn because when I went back historically and looked for where price had a problem, I drew it across, okay? But you have to say to yourself, this is not a finite price because it's just something you drew with your eyes, okay? It is a zone. So even though it's drawn at 149.9, it could incorporate 149.95 to 149 or 150.01, and that is that becomes a zone. We're not talking about when something happened at precisely 149.9. So we call this a zone. Okay. And when your indecision candle forms on this zone, we it then becomes important to us. Now we have to remember, and this applies in a down movement and an up movement, they're just mirror images reverse. So we would need a large upper wick that shows the buyers tried to continue the bullish move. See here, we have the large upper, so we, it shows that the buyers were able to push price up. Okay. It also has a small bearish body. The small bearish body shows the sellers were able to close lower than the open. This is significant because in the last three candles before this price consistently closed higher than open. This shows us the buyers were losing power. They're not necessarily leaving the market. They're not, the upward movement isn't necessarily over. At this moment, and like I said, we're, we're only concerned with who's in control of the market at this moment. At this moment, the buyers were losing power. For some reason, they're sitting on the sidelines or for some reason, they're selling or for some reason they're hemming and hawing and making a decision. Then we have also a smaller lower wick. Okay. So we have the small body, the blue shows you this upper wick, and then the red shows you the small lower wick. The small lower wick shows that, shows that the sellers were not able to gain much ground either. This tells us the sellers were not strong enough to turn price around completely. However, they are strong enough to stall it and stop the buyer's continued march. So all together, this indecision candle forming right after strong bullish candles suggested a power shift from a decidedly bullish market to an undecided market. While sellers are not in control yet, Neither are the buyers. But then there's the one more thing we need to look at. The indecision candle is formed on top of a resistance area. So we can see that right here on this chart. So if you remember, we talked about resistance being a sell area and support being a buy area. So the image above, or the image we were looking at, shows a strong bullish candle heading into the resistance area and then bam, it hits that resistance area and stops dead in its tracks. 
and price stalls and we get indecision forming on top of that area. It doesn't tell us anything at all yet. It just tells us, bam. Okay. But at this point, it's becoming significant because like I said, indecision candles form all the time. But when they fall on your support or resistance zone, okay, after a strong upward or downward move, it's like somebody hitting you in the back of the head and saying, hey, there's an opportunity here. Okay. But we haven't made any decisions. We haven't made any attempt to trade anything. We're just doing some analysis. So this tells us that the sell area and a resistance level is considered a sell area is working. When price pushed into that area, sell orders triggered and buyers could no longer continue up. That is the story of price on this chart. And this story gives us a nice little price action trade setup. Now, here is where we have to start paying strict attention. Okay, Price action allows you many different types of trades. You can trade reversals, you can trade continuations, you can trade swings, breakouts, lots of different ones. Okay, Today, we're only talking about the reversal setup. That's it. We have other classes and talk about the other setups. So, so now what we have is we have price moving up in a up, positive uptrend, hitting resistance and stopping dead. Now, we still haven't had the next candle form, so we don't know what's going to continue forward. But right now, this is where when we're looking at the wall to the right side of the chart, that's all we see. Now, reversals occur quite often. Reversal is one of the strongest price to action setups and one of the easiest to trade because they do occur often. So what we're concerned with is the preceding trend, not trend line, the preceding trend, the indecision candle, and then the reversal trend. Now, all of these must occur. So the preceding trend. A preceding trend is a strong move by the bears or the bulls heading into an area of support and resistance. The preceding trend in this case is a very strong, oh, wrong chart here, uh, bullet bearish move. In this case, we'll say bullish move. And the preceding trend, now I don't believe in this, but some people do, but the preceding trend could be one giant candle. I say there's too many volatility things that can push price too quickly to, to 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 even look at it. I don't ever look at this trade setup because I'm only looking for high probability trades. Okay. If I don't have at least three, and they don't have to be in consecutive order, but if I don't have three, either red candle setting new lows or blue green candle setting new highs. Now you could have a big red, a big green candle, and then a red candle and then another green candle pushing it back up higher and making a new high. Another green candle pushing it doesn't have to be necessarily three. It can be five. It could be seven. But you have to have that strong movement in a specific direction. Okay. Now, preceding trends are simple. If you see a strong move heading into an area of support or resistance, you can consider it a preceding trend. There are no rules. It's not like a trend line that it has to have rules. There's a difference between a trend and a trend line. The key is we want a strong move in a specific direction that when it hits that support or resistance zone, that it stops dead in its tracks and gives us an indecision again. A lot of times it'll go up to support or resistance, it'll go up to resistance, and then you'll see it just reverse and fall back down. Doesn't make an indecision candle. We need that indecision candle. We need that little important candle but it doesn't have to be at the opposite color. A, reset, a reversal setup will have one to three indecision candles, and it can have multiple. It doesn't have, it needs to be the next candles in the indecision, but you can have several candles that remain in this zone here. So you can have another candlestick here. I mean, you could go into the congestion, you have another, we need this one. And we have to move up, could be three, five, seven candles. 
we need the indecision on the resistance area. And like I said, it can bounce in here for a second or two. Because again, we haven't made any trading decision. Now, if the indecision does not form on or near the area of support or resistance, it is not a valid reversal. So you can see here in this downtrend that we got the reversal candle, but it's not at your resistance or your support area down below. So we don't have the setup. We just keep on moving forward. Why does it need to be on support or resistance? The indecision candle is a bullish preceding trend indicates that buyers are possibly losing control and sellers may be gaining control. And a bearish preceding trend indicates sellers are losing control and buyers may be gaining control. However, an indecision candle does not indicate that price will reverse with any degree of certainty. It only indicates one thing and that's indecision. So what do we have? We have a strong move up, a strong move down. One of the two, we have the indecision candle forming and that candle is on the support or resistance zone. So we have three pieces of a puzzle in here so far, no more. And again, I, you haven't heard me say anything about making a trade. We haven't talked about an entry point, a direction, a stop loss. We haven't talked about anything. We're just setting up something. We're reading what the price has done. So right now, all we've seen is indecision. Now, you cannot take a trade based solely on indecision. The image below shows indecision forming between support and resistance. You see all those little small candles in them? Don't tell us nothing in for this setup. They could be applied and used in other types of setups, but for this particular setup, you're looking for a very specific different set of actions. So for setups, you can have multiple setups you're looking at at one time. This setup only works and only is valid when these all things come together. So then we need to wait for the reversal trend. The reversal trend is a third and the most important part of the reversal setup. This is where we make our profit. So this is where we start to make a trading decision. So after a preceding trend stalls the support and in decision forms, you are often see a reversal trend. The image in the background here shows a reversal, a bullish reversal trend forming after indecision. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're an experienced trader, you know that trading, you make lots and lots of trades with very few successful ones. Because trading is about moving the odds in your favor and reducing your risk getting out of losing trades quickly and letting, you know, getting the most profit out of winning trades. So I'm not gonna tell you this is right seven out of 10 times. I'm not gonna tell you it's right 10 out of 10. I'm not gonna tell you it's right three out of 10 times. The fact is every time you see the setup, if statistically traded, you will make more profit than you will losses. But you have to take a little bit of a risk, but you do this, by setting your stop loss very, very, very close and following the rules very strictly. In this case, we saw a transition of power from the bullish preceding trend to the bearish preceding trend separated by a stall on resistance. So where would you think about entering a trade? Now, and then getting the timing right. Trading reversal trades, and I explained it, it comes in three parts, the preceding trend, the indecision, the indecision candle, and the reversal trend. You need to enter the reversal trade after part two, the indecision candle closes. So we had the small little indecision candle right on the support, or in this case, the resistance zone. And you need to enter a trade immediately after the finish of that formation but you need to do it before the next, the reversal trend completely takes off. Because what'll happen is there's only two outcomes here. Either the trade is gonna break up and continue the uptrend, the up movement is that, or it's going to break down and come down from that point. There's good, the most chances are, even if it's gonna continue upward, 
it will bounce off of that resistance zone when you see the come down and then turn around and go back up and push through it. Now, you can only do this at this very precise point. And you have to make sure you set your entry point and your take profit and your night. I don't care much about your take profit. You set your entry and your stop loss very precisely because you need to make sure that if it's not going to happen and the market is going to continue upward, that you don't lose. You'll lose a little bit, that you lose a wee little bit. So if you have three of these trades that come over time, two of them, the market's moved against you and you got out with a couple pip loss. The third trade does exactly what it said and the market fell down 50 pips. You ended up net 40 pips in your favor. So you need to make sure you do not enter too early as you could just be entering a fuss setup. So in the image I'm about to show you, you see a preceding trend heading into support, indecision and a failed reversal trend. If you had entered too early, you would have failed in this trade. So see here? Down, 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 indecision. And then the market continued down. So if you would have entered a buy based on this, guess what? You would have lost your shirt because you would have entered too early. So what is the key? Is how to enter and where to enter this market. Because you need to enter before this candle here is completed. So we would not have known this would have happened. But if you wait for some hardcore verification, because a lot of times it'll bounce out and come up here. If you waited for this candle to close, the next candle could have gone up here and then turned around and come back down to test that support area again. You would have lost a great deal of your potential profit. So the question is, how do you enter this trade and minimize your risk while taking advantage of the profit potential? So fail trades happen. There is nothing you can do about them, but getting in at the right time lowers your percentage of failed trades. Many people wait for a candle close to get in, but I have tested this thoroughly and waiting for closes get you in way too late. So, if you waited, in this case, perfect setup, reversal candle. If you had waited for this candle to close, it closed all the way up here. You lost all of this potential profit. And the chances are it's coming right back up to that resistance zone. It's going to come back down. So it's too late at this level to enter that trade. So if you waited for this next candlestick after indecision to close, you entered too late. But if you entered too early, guess what? It could have gone against you and you could have lost. So the question is, how do you prevent this? So the key to reversal trading or any trading for that matter is getting in at the right time. So how do you do that? How do you enter the reversal trade? Well, I have tested this countless entries over 15 years. And then I have found three awesome entry strategies, entering on the new high low, retrace entries and distance entries. Now, I enter based on the swing low. Okay. Market moving up, moving up, moving up, moving up. Indecision candle, and the candle's over. We're now getting into this new candle, wherever it is. I put my entry point just below the bottom of that wick or the swing low that that indecision candle made. So if this next candle breaks below it, it then enters a short trade for me. I put my stop loss right at the top of the swing high from that indecision candle. So if it moves against me, I get out with a relatively small loss. So we set our entry a few pips below the low of the indecision candle and our stop loss a few pips above the highest point of the candle. And trading highs and lows are very important. If a new low is created from resistance, it indicates sellers have taken control of price, which means we want to be short. So our stop loss sits above the high. Let me just clean up the screen here. 
So our stop loss sits above the high. And if the market breaks against us, it'll close us out, like I said, with a small loss. So this is the simplest form of a trade entry, but also the most effective. Now that you know how to enter, you need to know where to set your target. So where do you set your targets? Because you always have to calculate your, your risk reward ratio. So you need your entry point, your target point, and your stop loss point so you can calculate your risk reward. Because if it doesn't fit a proper risk reward, and for us, you should be trading two to one or three to one. So targets are also easy. You need to make sure your target comes before the next major barrier, like the next area of support or resistance. So if you enter a long reversal from support, make sure that your target is before the next resistance area. Okay. So your target would be below this resistance area. If you start calculating this for your, your risk reward ratio and you find your target must be above, to fit your calculations, guess what? You can't make this trade. Because risk reward and is more important than any trade. If it doesn't fit your risk reward ratio, do not make a trade. So if there's no major barrier like the next support or resistance area in my way of my minimum target, then I skip the trade. I always start out with my trend lines, then my support and resistance, stuff, they're always on my charts. Then I look at price action. And finally, I look at volume. That's the last thing you want to look at before you actually trigger this trade is you need to look at volume. Because if volume doesn't confirm what's happening, if volume was pushing up, 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 up as the market went up, and in that little indecision candle, the market the volume fell off, and then when you get ready for the next trade, if that volume isn't increasing back to support that bearish move, then you've got a problem. But if volume confirms, then this can be your entire trading strategy. In trading, a lot of people tend to overcomplicate simple concepts. Sure, some of the concepts in trading are not the sort of thing you would intuitively know, but many things are easy. You just have to know what to look for. So that's our indecision candle strategy. It's not quite complicated. But use a demo account and practice, practice, practice. You take advantage of this time you're going to have stuck in a house. I don't know where y'all come from because I have people here from all over the world. But it seems to be most of the world is getting quarantined in, which I find unbelievable. But that's a different subject. But if you're stuck in your house because the governments want you to stay close to home, then spend the time, like I said, use the Alvexo demo account and practice this. Try it out. Test it out. Don't waste your money yet. When you've got it down pat, then trade with it. So thank you very much for joining us and have a great trading week. And I wish everybody safety and health. Take care now.